Good morning and welcome to St. James Mount Airy and a special welcome to those of you who are gathered here in this lovely garden this morning on yet another beautiful Sunday in August. They're unbelievable, aren't they? And a special welcome to those of you who have joined us online. We are so glad that you are here. My name is Mary Sulrud. I am Interim Canon to the Ordinary for the Episcopal Diocese of Maryland. And it is always a privilege to be any place to celebrate the Holy Eucharist. But it's very lovely to be back here for week two with all of you while Kristen is journeying through the Holy Land. Today, please keep her in your prayers. She goes to, I think what I saw was the Wailing Wall um, in Jerusalem. Um, my husband and I have been there. It's a remarkable place, place suffused with holiness and many, many pilgrims. Let us worship God in the beauty of holiness. I invite you to stand as you are able, and our worship begins on page two of your service leaflet. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm appointed for this morning together. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim, in the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come to help us. You have brought a vine out of Egypt. You cast out the nations and planted it. You prepared the ground for it. 
It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shadow. to the river. Why have you broken down its wall, so that all who pass by pluck off its grapes? The wild boar of the forest has ravaged it, and the beasts of the field have grazed upon it. Turn now, O God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and tend this vine, preserve what your right hand has planted. They burn with fire like rubbish. At the rebuke of your countenance, let them perish. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. the one holy and living God. Amen. So here's what I want to know on a beautiful summer Sunday, when all of you have been kind enough to show up for church, what happened to nice God and nice Jesus? In the space of a week and a verse or two, in the gospel, we get to what one commentator called eight of the hardest verses in the gospel of Luke. And that's saying something. Faith in Jesus, like everything else these days, seems to divide us as much as unite us. So on a lovely Sunday morning, this is not the news that any preacher welcomes, especially this one. This is one of those days, however, when I think Hebrew scripture through the prophet Isaiah may offer us a better lens through which we can view and I hope understand the anger evident in our scripture readings today. So Isaiah begins with a love song 
about how it is that a gardener, yes, that would be God, lavished love on a garden, giving it all that it needed to bear good fruit. And it doesn't bear good fruit, disappointing the gardener and all of the expectations that the gardener had for the garden and its future. And of course, the garden for all the people of Israel and frankly, all of us. It's a devastating parable about the ways we can dis disappoint our maker, creator, redeemer, and lover. And the parable ends without much hope. The Christian writer C.S. Lewis reminds us that we certainly know love's beautiful and supportive voice. But if we take that voice seriously, love has another voice. And that voice is anger. True love, especially divine love, must speak not only of what goes well, but what does not. The life we live is not simply about forgiveness and grace. The path to forgiveness and grace requires a walk through repentance and justice. We are called to be a And even, as our confession of sin says, for the evil done on our behalf. As one person wisely wrote, accountability is not the opposite of grace. It is actually one of its aspects. God calls us into life and doesn't stand by tolerating sin and death without, without calling us to account for it. God does this because by naming what we have done wrong, claiming what it has done to others and to us, we have then that grace-filled moment of forgiveness and opportunity to overcome it. A sure sign of love is being asked by God to live well, fully, and delighting in God by being just to all, merciful to all. And we can't do that while we are holding on to what is death dealing in us. Accountability is not about being shamed by God. That's very important for us to remember. It is God making a claim that the relationship that God wants from us is rooted, must be rooted in honesty, love, courage, and hope. A relationship that counts, a relationship that matters, asks that we face the hard truths about ourselves that we are built to resist. A relationship with God requires that we be faithful to God's love here and now, even when it may mean, as Jesus points out, being rejected elsewhere. So what Jesus is speaking about today in the Gospel as he gets, now remember, he's on a journey just like your rector, getting closer to Jerusalem and his own death. What he's talking about is that we are called to the green pastures that we love in Psalm 23, and the miracles we love where we lie in the grass and are fed by the thousands. And we're also called to the cross. God, who is willing to die for us, requires a real commitment from us. That means that any devotion to Christ is countercultural, divisive, and fiery. And all, in all of this, we are to remember that Jesus isn't interested in any purity cult of unthinking followers, quite the opposite. Unlike the religious folks of his time, Jesus is interested in those on the margins of religion, those who have been broken by life, those who really are sinners according to anybody's moral codes, and who want to repent and be forgiven and walk anew with God. Jesus always has compassion on those folks, and that should give us a lot of hope. 
if you listen to the stories of healing and forgiveness, especially in Luke, you will hear how these sinners, like us, are embraced when they are accountable for who they are and what they've done and what they've been. Theologian Robert Radcliffe wrote that divine judgment is actually the bed that we unmake for ourselves. It is the punishing path we create for ourselves. It's a hard thing to take stock of our failure to live up to the person we could have been are intended to be by God. That's an angry love song if there ever was one. Radcliffe also wrote that God is not required to save us from the consequences of our own brokenness. But we are not left to sit in the misery of our brokenness in this life. God still has expectations of us. The divine dream of who we can be never goes away. We are still showered with the gifts of this earth, of faith, of hope, of love, of relationship that we can ignore or we can embrace. It's worth remembering where this gospel is headed near its close. Jesus is on the cross between two thieves. One taunts him, the other asks for forgiveness. Jesus has his arms spread out to both. Amen. Standing as you're able, I invite you to affirm your faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. The prayers of the people. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for, for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, justice freedom, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. 
for the peace and unity of the Church of God. And all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, you are invited to name, silently or aloud, prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. us to walk trustingly in faith with our presence and direction in all we do. Be with travel and return them safely to us. Amen. Gracious God, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned. you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Please greet one another with the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. And now I will turn to someone for some brief announcements, I think. So we wanted to thank Denise Warren for um, teaching the three, four, and five um, grades for Sunday school. We appreciate that. And I wanted to thank Jane Barker, Deb Schaefer, and Kathy Rock for uh, performing the audit of our church. Yeah. Um, Natalie's still here. They haven't called off any boxes, so I think we're okay. <laughs> I haven't heard yet. Thanks for being here, everybody. And so I don't forget it today like I did last week. Are there any um, people who want to acknowledge publicly um, the movement of God in your life? And that's a birthday or an anniversary or an unexpected gift of joy and compassion. Anybody? Not anything we need to pray for and about and give thanks for. You're very still. You're very still. Okay. Sure. Going once. <laughs> <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again you call us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day we join with the saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor and praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out and for all with the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with James and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation the feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
obvious. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread.
a prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I wait your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Please join me in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you can do better than that. Come on. <laughs> Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Much better. Yay.